How's it going everybody? Lucian Depp here bringing you another tutorial for 7 Days to Die. This one is going to be how to load Undead Legacy into your Linux version of 7 Days to Die server. Uh, for, so the first thing we're going to need is Undead Legacy. Uh, the one I'm downloading for the server that I've done uh, from the tutorial that I did just uh, the other day. Is this version right here 20.6 b9 um, just download the latest experimental here and I'll download uh, visit file here another thing that we're going to use is win SCP uh, this is like a like an FTP program you don't have to use win FCP if you don't want to uh, if you prefer like something like FileZilla for example to FTP into your server you're more than welcome to do that um, I just prefer WinSCP when I'm working with uh, Linux. So download that, and if you want to use WinSCP with me, download WinSCP as well. So first thing we're going to want to do is connect to our server yet again. And I'm going to switch over to the user we made, 7 days to die, because that's where mine is. And see if I got any screens running. Uh, Nope, so my server is offline, which is good. So make sure your server is offline. If it's not, go ahead and turn it off. Then what we're gonna need to do is go into our download folder here and extract our seven days of die uh, on the legacy mod here. So we're going to when we're our extract files, then okay. All right, now the files are extracted. We can open up these folders here. And we have all the necessary files that we are gonna need to run the server. So we need to connect to our FTP first. So we can transfer those files. That's the easiest way to do it. That's why I talked about the uh, FTP program in the beginning. So new site, our host. Mine is obviously gonna be different from yours. Um, so make sure you just put in all your connection information that you need in order to connect to the server. And after that, we're just gonna hit log in. Yes. And now we're in. So my server from the video tutorial I just did is located under server here. And then you can see all of our server files. So now this is pretty easy. So we're going to go back to our mod folder here that we just downloaded. I'll just make that a little bit smaller. And then we're just going to control A to select all these files. And we're just going to click and drag them over to here. And hit OK. And that's going to begin transferring all the files over. All right, now that that is complete, we can minus this folder here. We can verify that everything's in here by going to CD server and then doing LS, not in capital letters. And I got a mods folder and I have all the other files that I need. All right, so Real quick, before we do anything else, uh, Undead Legacy offers additional settings that we need to put in uh, the server config. So those settings can be found on their website. So if we go to dedicated server setup here, and then click this link, then dedicated configuration, and then you see these properties that we need to change. So. These ones I'm just going to copy. And then I'm going to go to my FTP because this would be the easiest way to do it. Instead of going to like, instead of doing, you know, nano uh, server config to XML and going through it this way, since uh, we have FTP right now, it is the easiest way to do it. So FTP, WinSCP, we're going to locate the server config XML, which is right here. We're going to right click on that, hit edit. And now these are the server config settings. I'm just going to scroll down to the very bottom here. 
And then under these last settings, I'm going to create some spaces, some lines, and paste those settings in uh, to make everything look pretty. I'm just gonna go through, tab everything so it's all aligned with the rest of the stuff. And there's a couple other settings here as well. We're gonna copy these and go back to our file here. And we're just gonna paste these in right underneath. Again, do that. All right, and then we need to disable uh, EAC since uh, Undead Legacy does not support uh, EAC. So we're gonna find that setting, which is right here. And EAC enabled. We're going to change this over to false. And then we're going to come up to the top left here where it says a little save icon, or you can do control S as well. Just save it. And then we're done with that. You can close it. And that's it for that. So we can minus this, or you can close it out, whatever you prefer to do. All right. So next thing is this is how we're going to run the server now. In the last tutorial, we ran the server just by doing the uh, start server, uh, this one right here. Uh, however, we're not gonna be doing that. For the dedicated server, they want us to run this one. But as you can see, this is not an executable file. Like this one is. You can tell this because the executable files, like this one, is green. This one's grayed out. So, in order to make it executable, we need to do chmod plus X, oops, plus X, and then run this like that, and then hit enter. And if we do LS again, now you can see that it is green. So now it's executable. So to start the server up, we're gonna do screen dash capital S. We're gonna name it server. And now we're in a new screen. So if we do slash run, then that server, if you hit tab, it kind of it auto completes things. So slash run, uh, bidenx server.sh, hit enter. And that is now starting our server. So this is starting our server with uh, on dead legacy. So if we do control A and then D to detach our screen, our server is still up and running. Um, do you do screen dash ls and you can see that our server here is running on this screen to, uh, to go back to look at the server for whatever reason you can do screen dash r and that takes you to your most recent screen here and you can see the server is still booting up and again i can detach it um, so that's pretty that's it i mean that's all you need to do to set up on the legacy uh, on your server uh, for linux pretty simple to do hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you on the next one